All right, before we start the Simpsons Diversity Index, I want to do a review. I want to do a review of exponential growth and logistic growth just to be sure you guys have a little bit more practice. So I'm going to give you some numbers here. And I want you to figure out the population size. So we're going to start in years 0, 1, 2, 5, 10. Now, I'm going to have our initial population size be 7. All right, we're going to start off with 7 individuals. Our growth rate, which is very important, remember growth rate is births minus deaths over population size. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that R will be 0.4. So let's say it was 4 or whatever x divided by 7 will equal 0.4 would be. That's going to be it. <laughs> so we have uh, births minus deaths over population size R equals 0.4. So the equation that you guys are provided on the AP biology formula sheet is written on the whiteboard with a green check mark. It is delta N over delta T equals R times N. Now, the good and easy thing with this equation is that it's very simple. It's just a basic multiplication problem. And so we can use this for years one and two. So go ahead and do that. Year one. 0.4 times 7. Have your calculators out, just like I am, and get this practice in. 0.4 times 7 equals 2.8. You will add this to your total. So 7 plus 2.8 is 9.8. Year 2. Let's do that. 0.4 times what is now 9.8. Three point nine. So we add that to nine point eight. We now have thirteen point seven. Easy, right? Did that in less than thirty seconds. Here's the downside to this equation. In order to use this equation, you have to go sequentially year after year after year. So let's say this is actually a problem on the AP exam, and it's asking you to get all the way to years five and ten. If you were to use this equation, you would have to do years two, three, four, which you don't need, and then six, seven, eight, nine, which you don't need. That's a waste of time. You, you cannot afford to waste time. Time is a resource that we never have enough of. So what I would recommend you do is use the other equation I have under exponential, but it is not on your equation sheet. So you're gonna have to memorize it. The benefit of this equation is that you can just plug in time in any year you want. So notice that it's in not, that's your initial population. So for year five, here's what we'll do. We'll plug them in. Seven times one plus 0.4 um, up to the fifth power because we're doing year five. So let's solve it. Uh, 7 times 1.4 to the fifth power. And then 1.4 to the fifth power is going to be 7 times 5.4. The 7 times 5.4 is about 38. So after five years, we have a population size up to 38 individuals. And then go ahead and do year 10. Year 10. 7 times 1 plus 0.4 to the 10th power. Two hundred and three. If you got 202, there might have just been some minor rounding differences, but 203 to 202, it's not that big a difference. All right, so there is our population. What I would like you to do now is graph your results. So let's make a graph. Uh, we only go up to 10 years, so time 
will be measured in years. Remember, what you're doing here is worth points in the AP exam. Not only, you cannot just put on the X axis, you can't just put two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. You have to actually say, what does that two, four, six, eight, ten 10 mean? I'm writing that down right there. It means years. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Why did I choose to go by twos? Because I'm different. If you did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, that's fine. Everybody has their own preferences. That's fine. Just Make sure it makes sense. And because I'm going all the, way, all the way up to 203, I'm gonna go by increments of 25 for my population. So 25, 50, 75, 100. 125, 150, 175, 200, 225. And that is gonna be in my population size, okay? You do that without your graph, you've already gotten some points. Very important stuff. So let's go on to graph this. At, at um, zero years, we are at seven. At one year, we're at 9.8. At two years, we're at 13.7. At five years, we're 38. And at five, uh, 10 years, we're at 203. So check out that curve. That's definitely an exponential growth curve. That's a J curve. What does this type of growth model not factor in? It doesn't consider a carrying capacity. So Charles Darwin realized that life cannot just grow unchecked. It, it, it has resources that are finite. Time, um, reproductive ability, reproductive years. That's going to all run out. So that's going to get me to logistic growth model. Remember that this does factor into carrying capacity. And the equation for this is change in population size, delta N over delta T, equals R times N times K minus N over K. R is your growth rate, N is your population size, K is your carrying capacity. I have everything written on the whiteboard for you too. So for this, let's just do four years, okay? Let's do zero, one, two, three, four. And we're gonna have our same numbers from last time. We'll have N equals seven, R equals 0.4, and we're gonna do a carrying capacity of 15. This means that the or this community, this ecosystem can only support a maximum of 15 individuals. So go ahead and solve for um, years one, two, three, four. I'm gonna work on it on the white, on the screen here. At zero years, I have seven, so I'm just gonna get to it, okay? If you need to look up for any reason, you're welcome to do it. Remember that you're adding the answer to the population. So seven, I got 1.5 uh, for year one. That means my population increased by one and a half. So I go from seven to 8.5. My new N value is now 
All right, there's my numbers. So now graph them. All right, so you see that the growth is certainly not, a, it's not as significant a J curve, but what I want you guys to really notice is that the population growth is slowing down. As it gets closer to 15, it slows down. For example, from year zero to, or from year zero to year one, it increased by 1.5. From year one to year two, it increased by 1.5. From year two to year three, it increased to 1.3. Okay, look at that, it's slowing down. From year three to year four, it only increased by 1.1. It's getting, as it gets closer to the carrying capacity, the population size, or excuse me, the population growth will slow down. And it's gonna to start to develop an equilibrium with that carrying capacity because the environment in this case can't exceed 15. If it does, you're gonna have more deaths than births. Yes, Sebastian. Good? All right. Okay, guys, now let's get to the new stuff. And then you're gonna be working in class for the rest of the day. This is called the Simpsons Diversity index. This uh, equation is a quantitative measure that reflects how many different species are in a data set. It basically gauges how biodiverse a given data set is. Now, if you looked in this room and I see that everybody has dark hair, most of them. Katarina probably is the lightest of all of you. That's not very diverse when it comes to hair color. So there are times where you can just look. And let's be honest, all of you have dark hair, not very diverse. But it's not always going to be that simple. And so you need to have a type of uh, analysis to measure um, how diverse a community truly is. And that's what this equation actually serves to um, provide. So let me give you an example here. Let your your answers are going to be, I should rephrase this. Uh, your answers are in the form of a frequency. And just like Hardy Weinberg, this means that the answer is going to be between zero to one. So it can be 0 0.22, 0 0.28, you know, whatever. So what do the answers actually mean? So let me give you an example of an answer. Let's say that you get a population that has a, a diversity index of 0 0.71. Here's what that number means. There is a 71% chance that two 
randomly selected individuals from a data set will be different. So if I were to randomly wander around a community and I was feeling all around and I grabbed one animal here and I'm closing my eyes and I grab another animal over here, there's a 71% chance that the two animals I just grabbed are gonna be different species. 71%, that's, that's pretty good. That, that, that's a very diverse ecosystem. On the other hand, you gotta look at the other side of this coin. If there's a 71% chance that they're different, what's 100 minus 71? 0.29, this means that there is a 29% chance that two randomly selected individuals from a data set will be the same. So as I say, it, it's not always going to be easy to just look and say, oh, you know, this class is all dark haired kids. You know, that's not very diverse. Uh, it's not that simple. So you're going to have larger communities. So let's do an example. I'll do half of it. I want you to do the other half and then you're going to spend the rest of the time working on uh, your assignment for today. Okay. So let's make your data table. All right, we have species A, B, and C. In community one, we have 325 species A, 305 members of species B, 370 members of species C. The total will be 1,000. In species, uh, community two, we have 925 members of species A, 40 members of species B, and 35 members of species C, which totals 1,000. Now, Katarina, just use your, in, in your opinion, um, which community do you think is more diverse based on what you see here? Community one, and you would be right. But as I just said with the, with the hair example, it's not always going to be that easy. But we're going to put these two to the test to prove Katarina's claim that community one is more diverse, which I'm going to tell you it is. You can tell by looking at it. Um, because if you look at a community two, by far the majority of the population is species A. That's not very diverse. But here's how you solve it. Here's your equation. SDI is Simpson's uh, diversity index. The equation is one minus the summation of little n over big n squared. Let's get an idea of what these variables stand for. Sigma means summation. In summation, you see the word sum, that means math. Little n is the total number of individuals in a species. And big N is the total number of individuals in the whole thing, total number of individuals in the whole data set. And this would be a thousand for each one. Okay, so I will do community one with you. And then I would like you guys to use that template to solve for community two. Still see some pens moving, I'll let you get caught up.
Ready? All right, here we go. Community one, let's solve it. You have three different species, so you're going to add three different values. So we're going to have one minus 325 over 1,000 squared plus 305 over 1,000 squared plus 370 over 1,000 squared. That's 305. I say 365, 305. All right, now, uh, if you guys remember third grade math, whenever you're adding fractions, you have to have a common denominator. Fortunately, they're all 1,000. 1,000 squared is 1 million, so I'm just gonna change that. So we have 325 squared plus 305 squared plus 370 squared over 1 million. Once again, if you don't know where I got 1 million from, 1,000 squared is 1 million. And whenever you're adding fractions, you have to have a common denominator. And so that's my common denominator for all three. Okay? So let's do the whole squaring and then add those together. 325 squared plus 305 squared plus 370 squared is going to be 335,550 divided by 1 million. One, or, um, 335,550 divided by 1 million is going to be 0.33555. And then one minus that value will be 0 0.664. Max, what does that number mean? Look at what I put for 71%. What did it, did you write that down? Yeah. Oh, okay. 71% chance that two is So what does that number mean? The chance that two is So what are the chances if I were to reach into a bucket, or if I were to reach into this community and grab two different creatures, what are the odds that they would be this uh, different species? So what are the odds that they would be the same? Can you do that math in your head? Uh, yeah, 34, 33.6. Very good. Okay, so this means that there is a 66% chance that if I randomly select two different species, or excuse me, two species, wait, there's a 66% chance that if I randomly select two creatures, that they will be different species. Okay? That's what that number means. So based on that template, I would like you guys to solve for community uh, two. What chart? So there's your numbers. Use your template that I just gave you for community one. If you're in here in class, uh, confer with a friend or a neighbor to see if they got the same numbers you did to confirm. Odds are if you got what they got, you did the same thing, you got it right. If you're at home, we'll announce what the uh, frequency is. And then the rest of the period is yours.
Katerina, what did you get? No, you write it as a frequency. So point, point one four. What'd you get, Tyler? Anna? Sebastian? All right. If you got point one four, I got point one four two. This means that if you randomly select two different critters, they're going to be different species. Are those good odds? No, that means that there's about a 86% chance that if you grab two different, or excuse me, two species, or, ah, two critters, two creatures, that they will be the same. So yes, community two is not very diverse. 0.66 versus 0.142. That's what I got. All right, that is it for this lesson. There is homework on Canvas for those of you that are e-learners. Uh, for those of you in person, I'm going to hand out your homework right now and you have the rest of the period to work on it. It'll be due tomorrow. For those of you online, it's due by 11.59. You may log off and get to work on your assignment.